Okay, well, so far, uh, so far this week, we've learned a number of things, you know, um, driven home by some of the lectures, some of the material, and some of our workshops. You know, we've learned how to read the explain table and get the information out of the explain table lets us know about the optimization. You know, did it use a table space scan? Did it use an index? Was there any sorts? You know, what went on in retrieving of the data? We learned how to read the DSN statement table. This is a, ta this is a table, if you remember, we talked about where DB2 comes up with some guesstimates on the actual overall cost of actually running a query and bringing the results back for us. We learned how joins operate. You know, we learned how why DB2 chooses a nested loop versus a merge scan versus a hybrid join. Uh, we spent some time writing some pretty involved queries on the joins. We've been explaining some joins. Correlated and non-correlated subqueries. Right, we've broken those down. They operate very differently. Every developer in my mind out there in the industry should know how to write it in and change it to an exist, or how to write an exist and change it to an in, a correlated to a non-correlated. Because you can get the same answers back, but they operate very differently behind the scenes in DB2. There's something in uh, version 8 called the scalar full select, where we actually take a select statement and put it up in the select statement. This is something new, and there's, there's times and places where this can be very efficient as opposed to what we had to go through prior to having this you know, ability to do it when it came out in version 8. And we talked about nested and common table expressions and how they operate. Okay, now the great thing about getting stronger in SQL like we have this week is that it kind of all culminated here in this workshop where now we, in this particular workshop, we had something, we had a solution that, and the answer set we wanted back. And as we saw, there was five different ways that a developer could code this to get the answer back. And the answer comes back exactly the same. But all five ways are, are written very differently in the SQL language. And as we see now, as, as we rewrite, that's how you become good at performance and tuning. One of the areas is to understand and be stronger at SQL and rewrite statements in different ways to get the same result set. Because now we've learned, as you write them in different ways, they operate, they optimize differently behind the scenes. And now we know how to read the explains and get some guesstimates from DB2 to help guide us on which ways we think at times um, are going to be the best way to code it. So let's, uh, let's look at um, a little bit of our workshop here. As you see, we're looking for a report that was just going to show number of employees by department. Pretty simple number of employees by department. I have two tables that we had to get involved here, right? So you think initially a join, okay, and you got some sub-queries, you know, on and on. We raised some nested table expressions in our workshop here. So let's take a look at it. So something as simple as just getting a number of employees per department, we came up with five different ways to write the query, all right? So let's go forward here. And as we page down in this query, and we page down here and we look at the explains that come out, we start seeing that the optimization, this is where the explain tool that we've been learning all week and evaluating and looking at really shows how the optimization is very different between the ways it, it handles these SQL statements and retrieves the data. So as you can just generally see here, and you guys all have this in your workshops, where you have some of them have R's for table space scans or some I's for index processing. We know this method 3 has to do with sorts, so we see query 1 happened to do a sort in order to bring the data back. Query 2 happened to do a sort. Query 3 didn't do a sort. So some are doing sorts, some are not doing sorts. There's some index processing going on. There's some table scan processing going on. There's a lot of different things happening amongst these queries. And then we have this one here. You see the creator, O-D-Y-T-A, a table called X. Where's that coming from? Well, this comes, ex comes right out of what we've been talking about with our nested, and table, our nested table expressions and our common table expressions. That if there's materialization that's done, and we know now that sometimes there is and sometimes there's not, and materialization is overhead. That means DB2 had to take the data, materialize it into a work file, which is overhead. It's got to create this work file, load the data into it, which makes the whole process a little bit slower at times. Um, and that shows up by, by the table name being whatever we called it. And in my case, I called it an X. I'm not sure what you guys called it in your workshops. You know, but you can call it anything you want to, um, up to maybe 128 characters now. I forget exactly. So I just made mine X. So as, you, as we can see here from the explain, and we're going to go through this in, in detail on each one of them, but out of the explain here, you can see there's a lot of different optimization going on. 
So you got a question? Yes. Uh, in this workshop, which is one is actually best? Well, that's a good question. Um, and the answer is typically it depends, you know. So this is where, this is where to be good at, at performance and tuning, we have to get a little bit intimate with what's going on with these queries and, what, and what's, what's happening in the materialization. For example, the materialization here, we know that's going on. What's materialized? Is it five records? 500 records? Five million records? The more materialization that goes on here, the slower your process is probably going to run. And what goes on during that, that? And that's where we'll start getting into some detail here individually and to explain to like break this down. Okay? So what does DB2 think is, is the fastest way to go? And if we go forward, this is where the DSN statement table here, in the DSN statement table, we get these, these cost categories and we get some estimates for what DB2 thinks is how fast it's going to take to, re to retrieve the data. So DB2 thinks that our third query out of our five is the fastest. Okay, so let's go back and see what, which, which one that is. So our third one happens to be the one here that has this new version 8 scalar full select. This is where we had the select up and the select that we learned this week. So, and we've also learned though out of the DSN statement table, you know, it's a, it's a guesstimate from DB2. It's not always correct. We've seen some examples where, where costs were lowered, but it still ran a little bit longer. But from DB2's point of view and what it knows based on the optimization on the catalog statistics and the object definitions, the way we wrote our query thinks this is going to be the fastest way. But really, we as developers, we need to go benchmark and test these. Okay, and we need to test them individually, and we need to see which ones run fastest. Now beware, the moment you run one of them, all that data is going to be pulled from the physical files into the buffer, into the memory. So when you go run your second one, it's probably going to run faster than the first one. may not be as efficient, but it's going to run at least as fast because all the data is already sitting in memory. So we have to, you, have to, you have to be aware of that, and you may want to run it each one of them five or six or seven times and take an average and see which one is better. And typically when you, when you get into these where there's two or three or four or five different ways, one or two of them are going to stand out. You know? So that, that, this is the key to like this whole week here is understanding the explain, understanding how to rewrite things different ways, and understanding materialization and where some of the slowness is coming from. And we'll see that and some of them are doing sorts and some are not doing sorts. Typically when you don't do sorts, things run a little bit faster.